Four Sisters Like Angel, and Alley Cat, where we highlight individuals making a difference in their communities. Yes, back to you, Angel. Yes, and tonight, oh my God, I love the orange hair. <laughs> um, we have a very special guest. It's Miss Stephanie Ngo, and I'm Angel. I'm a registered nurse and an actress, and Ali. Yes, my name is Ali Cat Castle, and yes, I'm also a YouTube content creator, and my channel is Ali Cat Castle, where it's all about makeup, 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 and I actually have short videos on makeup, that's one-minute videos, and I also do makeup product reviews with funny commentaries, and I'm Angel Real Life Sibling, transgender sibling, and I'm three years older than Angel, and a very special guest for tonight is my very special sister, who's so dear to my heart. And she's my fellow YouTube sister. And her name is Stephanie Ngos. And her YouTube channel is Stephanie Ngos. Okay? So I'll let you introduce her to you guys. Welcome, Stephanie. Aw, thank you so much, my sisters, for having me on your show. So hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Ngo. Um, I am a Bay Area-based content creator. So I make videos about my life as an Asian American in the Bay Area. I also do a lot of food and travel vlogs because that's what I'm all about. I love food and travel. Um, I love culture. I love, um, I love promoting cultures, um, my own culture, other cultures. Um, I love teaching people what I know. Um, so that's kind of what my channel is all about. Um, so I like to say that if you watch my channel, you're in the know with Stephanie in terms of anything, language, culture, food, and travel, as well as my life. And I love I that are. play of words. I love that play of words of like, I know. <laughs> I know. No, you know. That's right. And I think Allie was one of my first YouTube friends slash sisters. Uh, I think we met on a Facebook group when we both started out very, very young on YouTube. So yeah, we have a very close connection because of that. I exactly. Know. And that YouTube Facebook group is actually um, Subtle Asian Influence. So we want to thank Mr. Mean Fun for that channel. Because if not because of that, perhaps I wouldn't have met one of my all-time YouTube BFFs, Steffi Knowles. <laughs> so let's begin. Let's dig yeah. in. So first and foremost, uh, Steffi, can mm -hmm. you please tell us a bit of your childhood and where you grew up? Yeah, 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 that's a great question. So um, I was born in Santa Cruz, California. It is a beach town. Um, so I spent a lot of time there, but I was going to school in the Bay Area. Uh, so even though I was living in Santa Cruz, I went to school in the Bay Area. Um, my grandparents were living in the Bay Area, so I got to stay with them, uh, you know, after school, waiting for my parents to get off work and so they could pick me up and all of that. Um, so my Childhood was largely spent uh, a lot in the Bay Area. Um, and as I got older, we eventually kind of situated ourselves more in, into the Bay Area. I don't really spend a lot of time in Santa Cruz anymore. Um, but as far as growing up in the Bay Area, um, I was surrounded a lot by other Vietnamese Americans with, you know, similar stories as me. Um, uh, you know, their parents came over as refugees. Uh, you know, they survived the boat trips and you know, came uh, from east to west, you know, going from the east part of the United States all the way to the west part of the uh, United States. So I grew up in a very uh, Vietnamese environment, um, which I'm very uh, happy about. Um, so, uh, so would you say that you're the first generation? Second generation, because I was born here. Okay. Yeah, so my, my mom is from Vietnam, but I was born here, so... Um, yeah, I am second generation, but I got what? to be around a lot of other second generation, um, you know, Vietnamese American kids as well. Was um, there a lot of um, Vietnamese Americans or immigrants in, in the Bay Area and in um, Santa Cruz area growing up? Yeah, specifically, a lot of the Vietnamese are centralized in San Jose. Um, I'm not from San Jose, but I'm from near San Jose. Um, so where I was living um, wasn't too many. Vietnamese people but you know just go one town over and they're all over there versus Santa Cruz um, at least when I was growing up there weren't that many Asians um, it might be a little bit different nowadays you know 30 30 years later but back then it wasn't really a lot of Asians over so, there. so I want to see it on a perspective so 
um, when you were in, let's say, school, mm -hmm. let's say on your year level, how much percentage would be um, Vietnamese American or even the Asian Americans? Yeah, um, as far as where I went to school, um, the school that I was going to, at least, let's say primary school, it was a lot of um, Hispanics. Mm -hmm. So I would say as far as Asian, maybe, oh God, I'm really, I'm really bad at like guesstimating, but it, it wasn't a very like, big percentage. Um, maybe five or 50 or? You know, if, if I'm just pulling a number out of, <laughs> if I'm just going to pull a number out of the hat, maybe like 10%. 10%. Um, not too many Vietnamese kids in my particular school. Um, but then again, just go one town over and, you know, all the, all the Vietnamese kids were in San Jose, but I didn't grow up in San Jose, so. What is it that you're most proud about being Vietnamese American? Yeah, I think when it comes to being Vietnamese, um, in, I guess in contrast with um, other ethnic groups within Asia, you know, we definitely share this war story. It's, um, you know, our parents, um, you know, risked their lives. They had to leave a country that they loved and, you know, not everyone survived along the way. So you know, the Vietnamese American kids here are the product of the ones who survived. And that's a pretty deep thing to live with. Um, so, yeah, and I think as far as, Viet as far as being Vietnamese American, that is something very special when it comes to being Vietnamese in America. Um, it is, you know, because of the Vietnam War. Um, but, uh, so that's what I'm proud of. It's not just that, but I think it's also the resilience. It's giving their children a better life, better education, opportunities. Um, so I think that's one thing that's particularly special about being Vietnamese American. Yeah. Um, have you ever um, watched Miss Saigon? <laughs> oh yeah, it's been a really long time. And I understand Miss Saigon is very popular in the Philippines, yes. right? Yeah, it, it's I'm been a very long time. Our, a lot of our viewers are um are uh, global Filipinos, so I, I'm yeah. curious what what uh real Vietnamese or at least descent, you know, um would feel about that um show. Oh God, it's been it's been so long. I really can't even. I don't even know how to begin to answer that question because I really don't even remember the details, <laughs> to be honest. Okay. So, so it's um, not it's wanna... not that popular in um your community. It, you know, it's not really something that is talked about a lot, um, Miss Saigon. No, if anything, we reminisce about um, Paris by Night. I don't know if you two know Paris by Night, but it was it was um, like Vietnamese reality show. There was um, you know stage performances and a lot of singing performances. Um, so that's kind of what we talk about. I don't think anyone really talks about Miss Saigon. I'll watch that. <laughs> that. That's definitely something I need to uh, check out. Yeah, exactly. On my checklist. Yeah. So, so, so moving forward. So tell us about you, Steffi. So what do you do now? Yeah. So besides YouTube, um, I am a project manager by day. Um, this is actually a new job for me. I started two months ago and granted I was, un I was unemployed for seven months, um, you know, due to the pandemic. So, um, so there was a period of unemployment and now I'm, now I am employed. Um, I'm still kind of learning the ropes at this, um, uh, company, but again, I am a project manager. I'm managing some technical projects, uh, making sure that they're moving forward, um, keeping track of the budget, keeping track of employee hours. Um, yeah, that, that is largely what a uh, project manager does. Um, so I'm having a lot of fun with it. I really like the company that I work with. Um, I like that I can work remotely, you know, the pay is very good. So as far as, you know, what I'm doing in life, um, it's all going very well. Nice. So are you, by, by working remotely, does it mean you work from home or you go on locations? I work from home. Yeah. Nice. Must be nice to be able to work from home. <laughs> <laughs> She's so lucky. <laughs> so my follow-up yeah. question, question, Steffi, is... Um, before I dig in into yeah. you know how beautiful you, your YouTube channel is, Steffi is so smart that she oh. also knows another language. Well, <laughs> Can you please tell us about that? Yes, I'm glad you asked, Ali. So I am fluent in the Japanese language. 
Um, I started learning it when I was a first year in high school, so meaning ninth grade. So um, ninth grade, I took the opportunity to take Japanese at my high school. It turned out that I was really good at it and I really enjoyed it. So I just kept going and going, you know, I continued all the way throughout high school. I continued all the way throughout college. I even got to go to Japan during my university years uh, to volunteer at an orphanage, which was a incredible once in a lifetime op opportunity for me. Um, but yeah, back to uh, Ali's question, I'm fluent in Japanese, I can read, write, understand, speak, all of that, all that jazz. Um, and it's something that I'm very proud of. Um, it is, uh, it's something that uh, I feel is very important and special for me. So yeah, fun fact. How did that come about? Your likeness to learn Japanese? Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, I started in ninth grade and it was kind of a whim at first. Um, I mean, when I was in middle school, you know, I watched anime like here and there and I grew up watching Sailor Moon and Pokemon and all of that. Um, but as far as taking Japanese, again, it was kind of a whim. It was just kind of something that I saw other people were doing. So I just kind of thought I would do it too, because why not? And then it turned out I was actually really good at it. I turns out I have a penchant for learning foreign languages. And like I said, I really enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, besides just taking the Japanese classes, I got immersed in the culture. I made a lot of Japanese friends. I was very proactive about learning the things that I didn't know. So if I wanted to know how to say a certain word, you know, I would look it up and then implement it into my daily life and all that. Um, so, so that's okay. how it came about. So if we have our Japanese viewers watching right now, can you please say some, some, some message in Japanese and translate it in English? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great, uh, great question. Let me think. Uh, okay. Um, あの、日本人の皆さん、あの、はじめまして、ステファニーと申します。あの、私はあの、日本の文化や食事やあの、言語が大好きだから、ま、ぜひ日本語であの、話しましょう。Oh, okay. I'm trying to remember what I said. Um, I think I said, um, hello Japanese people. My name is Stephanie. I love Japanese culture, food, and the language, um, let's please talk in Japanese together. That's what I said. Those are the only like small words that I know. So now, <laughs> so now let's actually go and talk about Steffi's okay. YouTube channel. We okay. definitely now have an idea why she loves food. I mean, of course, why we're going to ask about food. Mm -hmm. Definitely why she loves cultures yeah. and travel, mm -hmm. you know. So now, please tell us about your YouTube channel entitled Steffi Knows. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so if you're asking about the title, um, you know, my name is Stephanie. And you can call me Stephanie, Steph, Steffi, whatever. Anything's fine. Uh, my last name is Ngo, N-G-O, uh, so you know, something that I'm very proud of. And I just thought of adding the S because, again, it's a play on, like, nose, because I, I feel like I know a lot about food and um, traveling and cultures and, uh, you know, being inclusive and, you know, just having and uh, being able to just communicate with um, each and every person, no matter their background. So that was kind of uh, my reading for the title there. Um, and uh, as far as like content on my YouTube channel, um, again, I'm a big foodie. I love food, especially authentic food. Um, you know, if I'm going to eat Filipino food, I definitely want like Filipino food and not food just marketed to Americans. You know what I mean? Um, so I love a good food. I love fine dining from fine dining to hole in the wall. I love food. I love to travel. Um, I really wanted to be a travel vlogger. That is my ultimate goal, but obviously cannot do that right now. So I'm just kind of um, doing what I can, uh, you know, making vlogs in my local area, whether it's about my daily life or, you know, food in my area, um, stuff like that. So I guess in the meantime, until I can really fulfill my goal of being a travel vlogger, I'm just going to stay safe and just vlog in my area and, um, you know, just do what I can. And just a quick question. What was the reason why you started your YouTube channel? 
because now of course we know what your YouTube channel is, but what was the main reason? What was the why and how? Yeah, that's also an excellent question. So as far as content creation, um, I did have some experience doing that um, on Instagram. So I've been active on Instagram for, you know, a, uh, maybe a year or two, um, learning how the algorithms work and meeting fellow content creators and what have you. As far as YouTube goes, um, I mean, one reason is because I did get laid off back in March. So suddenly I had all this time to just do something else. Um, when I got laid off, I wasn't really, I wasn't really thinking about getting back into the workforce. You know, by that time, I think I had been working for about five years. So then I said to myself, you know, it's time for a break. I'm, I'm okay with taking time off and just doing something else. So I started a YouTube channel. Um, I didn't know a thing about video editing um, or even just being on YouTube for that matter. So I just really dug into the world of video editing and, um, you know, not even just that, but everything from having to film and, um, you know, besides editing, it's uh, doing your own graphics, it's doing your own marketing, it's learning about SEO and it's uh, in marketing yourself on all these social media platforms and it's also meeting other content creators so you know it was a lot a lot of work um but not only did I have the time to do it but I think it was always always something that I wanted to do um uh, and honestly I think for the past 10 years it was always something that I wanted to do and I guess always just putting it off just because of one it's work and number two is um anxiety but again I think just because of COVID I suddenly had the time and just had that drive, I suppose, to finally get the ball rolling on um, my YouTube journey. So that's largely how it all started. Well, congratulations, oh, first and foremost, for, you know, like having your YouTube channel and, of course, having a good niche about your YouTube channel. So while doing this now for several months, you know, we started mm -hmm. together this past spring and everything, what have you discovered about yourself being a content creator? and having this channel of yours? That is such a good question as well. Um, I think I will start by trying to identify my niche. Um, in all honesty, it is something that I'm still trying to fine tune myself um, because I, you know, I know that I love food and travel and culture and all that, but I'm still trying to fine tune it a little bit more. Um, so I'm not sure if I want to go the direction of this is the life of an Asian American in the Bay Area and this is what her life is all about or do I want to go the like food and travel kind of route or do I want to blend of both of those things together and call that a niche. Um, so for the time being that is kind of what I'm doing I'm I'm just focusing on more of like my life and the things that I love the things I want to share with my viewers um, as well as food and travel mixed in as well. Do you think having a sense of community with its fellow YouTubers is important? Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't be anything without it. <laughs> I don't think any of us would be anything without a good community. I think whether you're a small YouTuber or a big YouTuber, um, you absolutely need, um, you need a community because, um, I mean, for one, I think the rules are changing all the time as far as, um, you know, YouTube's terms of service go, how the algorithm works, it's always changing and you always need, um, you know, that, that support. Um, it's, so it's not just the technical stuff, but it's also, I think, the emotional part as well. Um, I think sometimes as content creators, we're our own worst critics and um, we might not think that we're good enough. We think that who the hell would want to watch my dumb video, <laughs> but um, I think that when it comes to having a community, um, not only are they very supportive, but also they give good constructive criticism and feedback um, just so you yourself can get better as well. So now that you guys have a, a community and it, it sounds like it's very tight and you support mm -hmm. each other, do you target your content for that community or, um, or did that change the direction of your target or how you make your videos? Yeah, you know, I think when it comes to being a creator, you should prioritize what your viewers want. And that ties back to the niche. So 
like if I say my niche is, hey, I'm an Asian American vlogger and I love food and travel, uh, you know, come check out what I'm eating today, come check out what I'm traveling today, here's the top five places to eat in whatever city, you know, I feel like that is what I should be focusing on and um, because as far as our support group goes, everyone is so different. Everyone has such different talents and different worldviews. And likewise, they need to focus on their own niches. And at the end of the day, I got to focus on my own niche as well. And as far as like videos that I want to make, and I'm talking about like videos that I want to make, not necessarily what like my viewers would want to see. Um, I am more thinking about what I want to show the world and um, yeah, because some of my videos are kind, are very, very, as far as like showing exotic food videos, I think it's not something that might be for everyone, but it's something that I want to show to the world. So that's a good example of a video that I wanted to make. Here's all these exotic ass Vietnamese foods you've never heard of. You know, that's, that's something I want to present to the world and maybe not necessarily what other people maybe thought about. I should That's watch the first because I love Vietnamese food. Like, but I, I but the ones I have are probably the most common ones, like the ban me and the foe. <laughs> I love but them. that's one thing that I've learned about Steffi's channel too. It's not just about food, mm -hmm. um, but also about certain pronunciations. Oh, Actually, yeah. she just had um an episode and she said uh, the PHO is pronounced as pho. Uh, I'm not sure pho? if I said that right. Pho. You're so funny, Ali. Okay, okay. Let me let me reenact my video one more time. So okay. she's talking about a short that I did of how to pronounce the Vietnamese word pho, pho. and that's how you do it. Pho. I know, pho. I know it. I know it's hard. I know, I, I know it's hard, ladies. It's a tonal language. I get it. But the correct way to pronounce it is pho. Pho. Yes, yeah, like falling and then rising. Um, um, but that's one great thing about Steffi's channel is that it's not just about the food that she shows us. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the world that she shows us. I, I actually love like her episode in Dubai, you know? Oh, yeah. So you guys definitely should check that out. She also has done a lot of like um, reaction videos <laughs> with like Uncle Roger. She just, yeah, I love Uncle, Uncle Roger. <laughs> Yeah, and, me too. And, and wait, and she also has done like reviews with her boyfriend. Can you please tell us something about your boyfriend too? Yeah, yeah. I know you're curious, Ali and Angel. Um, so I do have a boyfriend that we've been dating for almost five years. Actually, next week will be our anniversary. Five year anniversary. anniversary. Oh, thank anniversary. you. Well, thank you. Um, so yeah, five years. Um, he is Filipino American. Um I actually didn't know a lot about Filipino culture until I met him. Um, yeah, so he's Filipino American. He is not on YouTube, but um, he does help me with my YouTube videos. So he hasn't been in a video lately, but yes, we have a few food uh, videos together. Uh, we have a date vlog together. So um, the stuff that we did for one of our anniversaries. So that was a lot of fun. Um, even outside of YouTube, we do go on a lot of dates. Um, I mean, not as of late because of all the lockdowns in California and such. But, you know, in a normal world, we would be going a lot of dates every weekend and um, having a lot of fun. So, so um, wow. we, we have a lot of Filipino viewers. So I'm sure mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who are curious on what things you've discovered with your relationship with him. Because we're both Asian Americans, but mm -hmm. there's, I'm sure there's still a lot of unique stuff from the Vietnamese and the Filipinos yes. that surprised you when you started dating or even up to now. Okay, Angel, do you know what really surprised me? <laughs> Kamai. Kamai what? Kamai, because... Like eating? So, I'm talking about Kamai versus chopsticks here. Because I was really, really, really surprised to learn that Filipinos don't really use chopsticks. Yeah, because I mean, maybe it was look, maybe it was ignorance on my own part, but I guess I just had this deduction that all Asian cultures automatically use chopsticks. You know, Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, Koreans, we all use chopsticks. Uh -huh. So I was really, really surprised to learn that Filipinos use kamai for um, most instances when they're eating. Right? Um, oh, spoon and fork too. This one is what. 
<laughs> yeah, but um, you know, I learned about Kamayan, Boodle Fight, um, and of course, you know, all the Filipino foods as well. Um, oh God, I love Filipino barbecue. <laughs> I love lechon, kawali, pansit, palabok, um, bangas, uh, adobo. Um, I love it all. Um, so Have for one, any? what? Have you cooked any? And I cook, no, I, I, I don't know how to cook Filipino food, um, but my boyfriend can cook um, some dishes and his father is really, really good at cooking. So food. if I may ask, what message do you have for your boyfriend? Oh, oh, that's so sweet. Um, you know, he's, a, you know, he's just, he's just the best, you know. He is just super understanding. He's nice to every single person, no matter who you are. He's just so sweet to everybody. Uh, very inclusive. Um, just such a nice, understanding guy. Um, you know, I wouldn't be where I am without him. So um, really, really happy for our last five years together. Really changed my life. And I know I changed his life as well. So really happy with him and hope to uh, be with him for life. Aww. Well, we I want you to know, you. Steffi. Oh my God, that's a very wonderful message. <laughs> you know, we just want you to know, mahal kita forever. Oh, mahal kita. Yes. Oh. Mahal so kita. tell us, Steffi, what's your vision for Steffi Ngo's YouTube channel? Oh, again, great question. Um, I would love to try my hand at travel vlogging, as I said. I know that's something more for the future, you know, after we have the vaccine and um, countries open up again, as well as their economies trying to get back to normal. Um, but eventually, I would like to be traveling the world for a living. It's something I've always wanted to do ever since I was very young. Um, I think when I was young, I felt very sh um, sheltered. And, you know, my parents didn't really understand the importance of learning about other cultures, but it's what I wanted to do. So it's something I've always dreamed about. Um, yeah, but again, that's probably more for a future discussion um, because the world is just so messed up right now. But as far as right now, I am probably going to make more. I'll try to make some more food vlogs. It's been a it's been a while since I've done a food related video, but I do have some ideas in mind. Um, so it's going to be that. There's going to be more about my personal life, the things that I like to do, the things that I want to show my viewers, maybe things that they never thought about doing before as well as um, probably showing parts of the Bay Area. So, um, you know, here's the top five things you should eat in South Bay, and here's all the best food in San Francisco, and uh, things like that. So I think that's what I can do for now. But uh, yeah, in the future, I would love to be doing travel vlogging, and, you know, hopefully you'll see me all around the world. So that's what I want to do with my life. I have a request or a question. Um, okay. What are the top three... Vietnamese di dishes that mm. Filipinos love and vice versa top three Filipino dishes that uh, Vietnamese love as far as um, in your experience oh, or at least from what okay. you know because um, I want to try more <laughs> than oh, what okay, I've okay. already like eat it yeah. you know? <laughs> that's such an interesting question Angel because I'm not sure exactly what Filipinos might know about Vietnamese food and as far as like their palates and what they would like about Vietnamese food. Like for me, for example, it will be the pho and oh, okay. the banh mi. Banh, like the banh mi, always good. Honestly, honestly, banh mi, it, it hits. Banh mi is so good. Um, I do, I do just want to make a quick note though, that one food that is shared between Filipinos and Vietnamese is balut. <laughs> yes. We eat balut too. Do you call it balut? No, we call it a hot yet lon. But but um but Vietnamese people do know the word balut, so I think just in shorthand we do say balut. Totally fine. But yes, but balut is eaten in Vietnam and Philippines. So do you also eat it wow. with salt, like you because like for us in yes. the Philippines, if you buy it on the street, um so they carry it in the basket. Yep. It, the the salt are wrapped in this small paper <laughs> and then you kind of oh. open it and sprinkle the the, the thing yes. for like getting yep it. we use salt and pepper um i think there's this herb um that we use in the vietnamese 
version that is not used in uh, the Filipino version. It's, um, it's this herb called um, rauram. I, I don't know how to say it in, Eng in English, but I don't think it's used by the Filipinos. But I think that's the only difference is that we eat it alongside this herb. But yes, we do use salt and pepper. So I think that is one. And I think maybe even Filipinos didn't even know that Vietnamese eat balut as well. Probably not until you tell but, me now. <laughs> yes, but, but to answer your original question, uh, I didn't forget. Um, of course, I think that Filipinos would love pho. Um, I personally really like this dish called bun seo. Do you know what it is? Bun seo. Um, maybe if you tell me what it is, okay. then I would so, know what it is, but not so the name. It looks like that yellow crepe. So it's like this... Um, rice flour tapioca crepe and so inside in the soup or something like that no 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 soup so it's this crepe and inside are uh, bean sprouts shrimp and pork and you eat it with um some lettuce and fish sauce mm. wow really cool. mm. i love fish sauce yes yes i love fish sauce I think that's the benefit of dating also um, Asian American. You can have fish sauce as much as you yes. want. Yes. Oh my God. I love fish sauce. <laughs> I can't deal with people who don't like fish sauce. So. <laughs> They're missing something for their life. Patis okay. in the Philippines. It's, that's what we call it. Patis. Patis. Okay. I, I've heard that word. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and then, you asked about three Filipino dishes, right? Yeah. 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 Um... Pressure. I mean, I think, I think, um, <laughs> no, no, it's just, I think uh, a lot of people would automatically just say like adobo, thicken adobo. Mm -hmm. uh, also lumpia. Um, oh, I yeah. actually like Filipino lumpia more than the Vietnamese version, actually. Oh, I you have a fried the lumpia. the Vietnamese also. version more because it's crunchy and you also like wrap like the, the lettuce around it because in the Philippines, we don't wrap the lettuce. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So in the Vietnamese version, you can um, eat it with the lettuce and the fish sauce or you can just have the egg roll by itself. Um, I don't know. What's the difference? Like... What's the biggest difference between the ingredients or the taste? Yeah, so with lumpia, um, I think I like how much how much vegetables there are and i really like the vinegar dip mm. oh, yeah wow. i like the vinegar dip the vietnamese version um i think a lot of people know it for the the egg roll wrapper which is fine but i, I actually like using rice paper more because you get that really nice crispiness um mm -hmm. ingredients wise um it's a lot of pork um you can use vermicelli noodles you can use um crab uh, you can use some other vegetables um, like pickled carrots and daikon. But I don't know, just something about lumpia. It, it just, I think it's a little bit lighter and I really like the vinegar dip. Oh, oh my God. It's making me hungry with <laughs> all of our stuff. I know. Food. But I feel like if uh -oh. I watch your, your YouTube channel, I'm going to be hungry all the time. That's yeah. the effect I have on people. <laughs> exactly. Like when you watch uh, Steffi's like, uh, like YouTube channel, Steffi Knows, I always get hungry. I always tell her, why? Oh my gosh. I need to but, come up with more food videos. It's been a while. I know. <laughs> it's like, and the way she like does it and her like, um, the way she would like, uh, you know, film it. It's just amazing. So now I also want to ask, since we're talking about, you know, different Asian cultures, different foods and things like that. What is your message to the Asian American community, especially for us Asians living in the United States? Yeah, so I definitely think when it comes to being Asian American, um, I think number one is understanding your roots, where you come from, where your parents come from, because there definitely is, there can be a big divide between their way of thinking and our way of thinking. Um, so one is just having a general understanding of where you come from, where they come from, trying to bridge that gap. Number two is, um, I think, well, at least in my experience, there's a lot of expectations. It's, you should do this because, um, you know, Asians, uh, you should be doing this with your life. You should be going down this career path. You should be behaving in, in, this, in this sort of manner, you know, stuff like that. Um, I think that in this generation, especially in 
you know, the 21st century. Um, I think there's a lot of freedom to just do whatever the heck you want to do. You know, you don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer. You, you can be a content creator. Um, um, you can go into art, you know, you can literally do whatever you want with your life and not have to listen or care about what other people might think of your career path and whatever you want to do and however you want to dress and who you want to date, all of that stuff. You, you don't have to listen to what anyone else thinks is best for you because you know it's best for you. Yeah. And your message to the Vietnamese Americans, the Vietnamese people. Yeah. As, um, again, I think um, being Vietnamese is a very special identity, again, because, um, you know, the war brought us here. You know, not just here in the United States, but, um, you know, there's a lot of Vietnamese in Europe. There's a lot of Vietnamese in Australia. You know, that's just where their parents escaped to. Um, so I definitely think that our legacy is, um, our legacy is worldwide. Um, so if, number one, it's um, standing up for your fellow Vietnamese, understanding where we come from, um, you know, live life the way you want to. Because as I said, you know, there's a lot of stigma within the Vietnamese community. Um, and there's a lot of it, you know, there's stigma against uh, women in power, stigma against tattoos, stigma against divorce. Um, there's so much damn stigma about a lot of different things. And I think that, you know, it's a new age. You can say to hell with all that, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna live my life the way I want to. You know, if you wanna dye your hair, if you wanna get a tattoo, um, you wanna date someone of the same gender, um, you wanna, you want to go to art school, all of that stuff, go ahead and do it. Because um, I think that at the end of the day, you don't have to be confined to whatever nationality you are. You, you can just be your own person, regardless of race and gender and age and socioeconomic background and all of that. So I think that's um, my long winded response to the Vietnamese community is, um, you know, be proud of who you are, but also, um, you know, what's best for yourself and you can make your own path in this world, just, just like we all did, all three of us here. You know, we're all content creators, we're all just doing our own thing and sharing our knowledge with the world, so I think you can do the same. I can feel the passion. Oh. <laughs> well, as a Filipino-American, I want you to know, Steffi, that you have our support. Oh. And we love you so much. Much. Oh, mahal kita. Yeah. Of course, I'm supporting both of you too. You know, I mean, I, I mean, and, and, and I'm really like, honestly, I've under, I've under, I, I've come to understand the Asian culture more because of our group, subtle Asian influence, mm -hmm. because of celebrating all the smart Asian YouTubers out there who are totally. so supportive of each other. Who, we are, yeah. You guys have a very special place in my heart. On that note. Hmm. What is your advice or your message, especially in this time of pandemic, to the rest of the people in the world and who are watching? So as far as the pandemic goes, um, I think, number one, be safe. Um, listen to scientists. Um, wear your damn mask when you go out. <laughs> Bring sanitizer with you. Um, I'll, I'll, I don't think I have to go into a long-winded explanation here, but number one, safety. You know, be safe, be hygienic, wear your damn mask, people. Uh, number two, as far as, I guess, personal life goes, um, don't make excuses, make opportunities. So, you know, me, I lost my job. Um, I had all this time on my hands. I, I didn't complain, you know. I used my newfound time to gain new skills. Um, like I said earlier, I didn't know a thing about video editing or YouTube search algorithm or how to market my channel, all of that, or even like making my own graphics. I'm not, I'm not really a good graphic designer, but I have to do it because I'm, I'm like the CEO of my channel, right? So I have to freaking do it. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have to be content creation necessarily, but anything you want to do in life, don't make excuses, make opportunities. And that's what I did. I took the opportunity to learn all these skills, become a YouTube content creator, and I'm still doing it. I'm still learning every single day. Um, you know, it's meeting new people and it's learning new things from them. It's, it's bouncing ideas off of each other. 
Um, and it's also just, you know, finding the, I guess, motivation to keep going. So anything you want to do in life, don't complain about your circumstance. Don't complain about where you come from. Don't complain about your lack of resources because truth is you are resourceful. And use your resources, use your communication skills to meet with people, use the internet to learn whatever you need to learn to, you know, be successful. So you can do it. You absolutely can. Um, I oh, really the alarm can. already went off a little while ago, but I oh. want to <laughs> add one quick request and then okay. Ali might have another one, but, um, and then before we wrap up. So, um, so you speak Japanese, you speak English, mm -hmm. of course, very well. You also yeah. speak Vietnamese. A little bit. Okay, can you just like say something, like um, invite everybody to watch Sisters Like Angel and Ali in Vietnam? Oh, yes. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, xin chào mừng nhé. Um, um, xin gửi Sisters Like Angel and Ali on YouTube. So I said, um, hello everyone, please watch Sisters Like Angel and Ali on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, I love you, Steffi. <laughs> so you should watch because Steph yes. knows. Oh. I know. <laughs> exactly. And you can be in the know too. Yeah. Okay. And this is my last question for Steffi for this evening. Steffi, what is your holiday message? Uh, my holiday message. Um, granted, this is a very different kind of holiday, right? Um, like, for example, I'm in California, and literally starting today, we went back into lockdown, right? So as far as a holiday message, um, number one, it's continuing to be safe, continuing to be hygienic, wearing our masks, um, you know, limiting exposure to other people. Um, but as far as that goes, you know, it's almost a brand new year. And again, you know, keep working on your mental health, keep checking on the mental health of your friends and family. And again, um, time isn't stopping, right? Time isn't stopping for you or anyone else. Anything you wanna do in life, and if you want to keep, su keep succeeding, don't make excuses, make opportunities. <laughs> oh my gosh, I really, really love this. Okay. <laughs> So, yes. Steffi, can you please invite them on oh, your YouTube let's, channel? Let's ask the last three questions and then okay. our invite. <laughs> okay, we're going to ask the last three questions first. Okay, so before we do that, what's your um, tips on beauty, self-care, and health? Yes, yeah, so beauty. Um, you know, I learned this from Ali that we are beautiful with or without makeup. <laughs> Um, but that being said, um, when it comes to beauty, um, I think um, I think it is something that can be celebrated. But uh, remember, we're beautiful with or without makeup. And uh, the second thing you said it was uh, self care. Self care. Definitely, um, yeah. Self care is absolutely important. And again, I think it just depends on the individual. You know, whether your self care is good skincare, it's um, going on hikes, it's, you know, relaxing to Netflix, it's playing video games, it's having Zoom calls with your friends. I think self-care comes in so many different forms and it's never a waste of time. I think that if you enjoyed yourself and you do something that makes you, that really makes you feel better, it's not a waste of time. It's absolutely worth it. And then and health. health. For your health. Health, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think we're talking about physical health here. You know, no matter who you are, no matter, um, you know, how old you are, um, you have to take care of your health. You know, I think when you're young, you think that you, you have so much time left and you have so such fast metabolisms, you can eat whatever you want, but that is going to stop. Um, that will change as you get older. Um, so no matter how old you are, definitely prioritize your health. Um, definitely eat healthy, you know, <laughs> limit your carbs. Um, focus on high protein, eat your vegetables, um, eat your fruits. Um, you know, if you're not good at, if you're not good at eating vegetables and fruits, um, I love to make a smoothie personally. I think it's a really easy way for me to get my nutrition. Um, so absolutely focus on your health. Um, spend the money to get a gym membership. Um, you know, you know, I think when it comes to that, you know, you can sacrifice other things to afford a gym membership. So, 
you know, when it comes to health, it is an investment in you. Because if you're healthy, your mind is healthy, and you can keep going. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so now let's invite everyone. <laughs> and let's invite everyone now, Steffi. Please invite them both to your YouTube channel and your Instagram account as well. Yeah, and, and, and if you have any last words that you want to include yes. that you didn't, we didn't get to ask, and it's very important to you. Awesome. So to everyone watching, uh, my YouTube channel is Steffi Knows, S-T-E-P-H-I-E-N-G-O-S, Steffi Knows. Uh, please check it out and, you know, like, subscribe, comment. I, I um, respond to all comments on my YouTube channel. So please send me a message. We'll get connected. Um, for my Instagram, um, it is steffi.knows.food. I hope it'll be linked somewhere here. Uh, but, please, um, but please follow me. Um, please send me a message. Again, I respond to all DMs. So you send me a message. You want to get connected. I would love to chat with all of you. Yes, it's definitely going to be in the description box below. Both um, Steffi Knows um, YouTube channel as well as her Instagram account as well. Awesome. And I think just one last message. Uh, I definitely think that this is an era where everyone is being seen. Everyone is being acknowledged and recognized. So no matter who you are, you know, where you come from, what you're about, um, there is a place for you in this world, um, especially on social media. So if you want to, um, you know, if you want to be a content creator, no matter who you are, there are people who are going to, who are interested in your story. So please, um, you know, be brave. Um, there are people who love you out there. So remember you are loved and do, you know, do what you want to do with your life. So. Thank you so much. I'm so inspired. <laughs> Oh, I'm Alan, flattered. Thank you. Last words. Oh, well, my last words. I don't know it's how I'm going to follow Christmas, through. So obviously. I, 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 I don't know how I'm going to follow through with everything that Steffi said because she's really, really a very, very, very close and very dear sister to me in my heart. She's just not a friend. She is my chosen family. You know? Absolutely, Ali. I really do. And I'm so glad I got to meet Angel tonight as well. Me too. Oh, oh my God. Of course. Yeah, oh. I, know, I know you're in LA and I wish we could meet up, but Eventually, soon, soon. it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So everyone, please support again our dear sister, Steffi Ngos, S-T-E-P, S-T-E, S-T-E-P-H-I-E space N-G-O-S. That's her YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe as well as for sisters like Angel and Ali. Please mm -hmm. like and subscribe and also, please support my YouTube channel as well, Ali Cat yes. Castle, where I went back and found my love again for makeup, where I do one-minute um, makeup tutorials. And every Saturdays, I do my funny um, uh, makeup reviews with my funny and silly commentaries. Back to you, Angel. Yes, and speaking about um, YouTube channels transitioning and evolving, some of Ali's singing are now on our channel, Sisters Like Angel and Ali. So we got the benefit of that. And watch out for new episodes. I'm going to put in some of my own also. So at least we're going to have a balance of Ali's and mine and both of ours still. Um, and thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Um, we want to highlight individuals that are making a difference in the community. So I hope you guys keep tuning in every Sunday. We have new episodes. And thank you so much, for everybody. Please like, comment, subscribe. And Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to everyone. Merry Christmas. Um, Stephanie, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for sharing your talent, your love, and Really, I'm hungry now, so I will have to eat after this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. <laughs> and every time I watch your episode, I'll probably get hungry. So I should watch it right before I go <laughs> out to eat. Um, thank you. Merry Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Everyone.